Well, time now for Voices of the Region when we hear from an area journalist about topics in the news. Joining us this week is Heidi Holton, Director of Content and Public Affairs for KAXE and KBXE Radio in Northern Minnesota. Recently, we heard about a new book featuring a story that is well known to most Minnesotans. On a dark October night in 1989, 11-year-old Jacob Wetterling was abducted at gunpoint from the small town of St. Joseph in central Minnesota. His mother, Patty, spent the next 27 years tirelessly investigating lead after lead and advocating for stronger sex offender laws. She never turned down an interview or a chance to get out the word about Jacob, and she never gave up hope. Dear Jacob, A Mother's Journey of Hope is Patty's new book. It's a detailed account of the decades-long investigation to bring Jacob home. But we also learn about the family's emotional struggles, the heartbreak of following lead after lead to nowhere. Having a missing child is incredibly lonely. And uh, there was no guidebook. There was no, um, I, I was winging it as as we went along. And um, I didn't know how to get through the holidays. I think that was the very first. How to, it was it was heartbreaking, and so I wanted to. I, ha I was filled with hope. I was told from the the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children that kids come home, don't give up, and so um, I wanted to carry Jacob with us and and be part of our holidays. And then his birthday's in February, so I just started writing letters to him. It's like. It's hard to celebrate without you here, but we will have great parties when you come home and, and uh, your sisters are doing this and your brother's doing that. And, and it was important for me. I wanted to, I really, really thought at some point I could hand him this notebook of or file of, of letters to, to let him know how hard we had searched and how we had carried him with us all along the way. Itasca Waters is a nonprofit in Itasca County. They're hosting a special Halloween webinar Tuesday, October 31st at noon. It features Dr. John Downing. He's director of the Sea Grant Program and a professor in the Department of Biology at University of Minnesota Duluth. His topic is supernatural lakes, monsters, ghosts, witches, fairies, and aliens. His Halloween treat will be about spooky stories of seemingly serene waters of lakes around the world. Lakes are kind of the spookiest places on earth, and so many lakes are considered to be haunted or haunted by ghosts, haunted by witches, um, and it shows up in the names of Minnesota lakes. And you can look at look at the list of lakes and you see things like Ghost Lake and Skeleton Lake, Witch Lake, and, um, Serpent Lake, a variety of things like that. So um, I think generally people see lakes as pretty mysterious. They look down into them, they can't see far. And so you begin to kind of wonder what might be going on inside these lakes. And I think sometimes the imagination runs wild, but there are really strange things that happen in lakes. I mean, and a surprisingly strange. And I don't know if you've ever seen the Will of the Wisp, um, which is really interesting, sort of a, um, spontaneously glowing swamp gas, um, but that, over the years, has people have followed those lights and drowned, um, and so they're thought of as in indicating evil water fairies. I mean, there just are odd things that go on with water. Finally, fall is here, and the students are noticing what's going on. John Latimer is our staff phenologist. This fall, we celebrate 40 years of phenology on the air. It's nature reporting. Simply put, it means noticing what changes in nature. Not only does John give us weekly reports, students from all over the state are sharing what they are learning with us, like the third graders in Badet. This is Melody with the phenology report from Badet for October 14th to 18th. Students are noticing flocks of juncos and American robins in their yard, especially around crab apple trees. On Friday, our class spooked a flock of around 50 bluebill ducks from 
one of our school forest ponds. On Monday night, Aurora went to thread squirrels in her yard, stashing acorns for the winter. Finally, there appears to be an ambience of bu high bush cranberries still holding on around our school forest.